Welcome to the session about thread states. So in here we'll discuss about the thread states and we have new, runnable, blocked, waiting, timed waiting and terminated. So these are the thread states. New, runnable, blocked, waiting, timed waiting and terminated. So in this diagram you can see we have the new state which is in light blue and we have the runnable state in the middle it's depicted here and the terminated state which is in red and the bottom we have blocked waiting and timed waiting and let's see how we can elaborate this explain this so we have new state once the thread is created it's in the new state once the start method is invoked so we covered these theory things in previous sessions so if you need to uh, brush up those areas you can watch those videos so once we created new threads and we invoke the start method so once the start method is invoked the thread goes to the runnable state once the thread is created it is in the new state and once the start method is invoked it goes to the runnable state and once the runnable method is executed once it's done it goes to the terminated state so it goes to the terminated state and while in the runnable state few things can happen so as a result it goes to the blocked waiting and time waiting for those three states so let's see how it can go to the blocked state so this the thread is in the runnable state and it fails to acquire the lock it goes to the blocked state once the lock is released it again comes to the runnable state so it's decided by the thread schedule. So that is about the blocked state. So blocked state is also known as a non-runnable state. So from the runnable state, let's see how it can go to the waiting state. Once the wait method or the join method is invoked, it goes to the waiting state so from the runnable state wait or join method is invoked it goes to the waiting state so in order to come back from the waiting state to the runnable notify or notify all should be invoked it is the waiting state is also known as a non-runnable state it is a non-runnable state so let's see the time waiting state so from the runnable state it can go to the time waiting state so when the sleep method or the join or wait is invoked with a time specific time with a parameter it goes to the time waiting state once the time is up, it again comes back to the runnable state. So these are the thread states. New, runnable, blocked, waiting, time waiting and terminated. So once the thread is created, it is in the new state. And once the run method is executed, once the thread is started, once the start method is called, so it goes to the runnable state. Once the start method is called, so start method, method is called, it goes to the runnable state. So there are not runnable states, those are waiting, time waiting and blocked. So in the diagram you saw that not runnable states.
So let's see the relationship between runnable and not runnable states. So if the thread is in the runnable state, it fails to acquire the lock, it goes to the blocked state, which is a not runnable state. And once the lock is released, it comes back to the runnable state. So that is point number one. Point number two, if the thread is in the runnable state, if the wait method or the join method is executed, it goes to the waiting state and once the notify or notify all is invoked, it comes back to the runnable state. So that is option two. So let's see the option three, point three. If the sleep method or the wait method is uh, invoked with a specific time duration as the parameter, it goes to the time waiting state. And once the time is up, it comes back to the runnable state. So the not runnable states are blocked, waiting and time waiting. So we saw how it can happen from the runnable state to the blocked state and again back to the runnable state and from runnable state again to the waiting state and again back to the runnable state runnable state from the time waiting and again back to the runnable state so option one it, when failing to acquire the lock it goes to the block state and once the lock is released it comes to the runnable state and based on the wait or join it goes to the waiting method and once the notify is invoked or the notify all is invoked it comes back to the runnable state once the sleep method is invoked with a specific number of time it goes to the time waiting state and once it's done it's come back to the runnable state <coughs> so let's see the terminator state when the thread has executed the run method normally successfully it goes to the terminated state so we have terminated state here so thread exceptions this is generated when a method is called on a thread whose state does not allow for that method call so it put illegal thread state exception state check methods so there are few methods uh, to methods to check the state so one is uh, is alive is alive method returns true if the thread has been started but not terminated so it is either in the runnable or one of the not runnable states so is alive returns true if the thread has been started but not terminated so it's either in runnable or not runnable states. Is alive method returns false if it is either in the nim or terminated states. So we can use the get state method to get the current state of a thread. So if you go to the demonstration, thread states, so we have class called mythread which implements runnable. So in a detailed session we explained about a demonstration about thread states, here we just have a, just recall about thread states so once the thread is started state of the thread after starting it 
and once the start method is in works we again get the state so let's execute this and see state of the thread one after creating it it is in the before the start method is invoked it is in the new state and once calling the start method it is in the runnable state so it's same as here once the sleep is called it is in the time waiting state once the join is called it is in the waiting state and when it has finished the execution it's in the terminated state so this is just having a look at the demonstration which we comprehensively analyzed in a previous session so this along with this theory session there will be another video which comprehensively analyzes the thread states which, which explains this code in a separate video so please watch that as well so again coming back to the presentation thread states So these are the possible thread states, new, runnable, blocked, waiting, time waiting and terminated. So this diagram is very important. So it has the new state, runnable in the middle, terminated here. And it has three non-runnable states, blocked, waiting and time waiting. So once it is in the runnable states, the thread schedule decides which one is in the which one should go to the running state. So it goes ready from running. That's the end of this session.